the world we live in, we always have to think, okay, if we want to take care of our family, and we think that the dollar is falling, we think that gold and silver are great, however, they're gonna be hard to you know, barter, what are some items that we can have to take care of our family? Well, of course, food security. Well, food is a good thing not only to grow for ourselves, but it's a great commodity to barter. So now let's talk about five grains that may be excellent to have in your home, just in case you may need to barter, eat, or have that sustainable agricultural source to replant and make food for the masses. The question always comes down to, if something were to happen, if uh, the crap hits the fan, if an EMP strikes, what do you have right now? And what you have right now, can you make it with what you have right now? These five grains can be huge to have, they're shelf stable, and they can give life a form of money, and a commodity for the future. Let's jump into the five grains that we're gonna be talking about today. Video starts right now. Walk with me. Let's leave the past behind. Hey guys, welcome to The Max. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new to The Max, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell. We're gonna be giving away tons of gifts, thousands of dollars worth of prizes uh, once we hit 200,000 subscribers. And then months after that, we're gonna keep on giving. So the only requirement is you to be subscribed, ring the bell, and give us a comment saying, hey, you're new to the channel. We love to see those kind of comments. Now let's jump into the video. Five grains that not only can be bartered, not only can be the commodity of the future, not only take care of your family and allows you to eat, but you make and feed the masses as well. Grains were used as a form of currency. It was a commodity, again, to feed, to barter, and to take care of our families or civilizations. It has been around for a long time. And the way we store our grains, there's Mylar bags we seal up, and also we have food grade buckets. We keep all those things in a very closed off room, does not have a lot of sunlight. Now, all of these things can be placed in sunlight or in any pantry. The less light exposure, uh, the better quality of a controlled environment, the more your grains will last. So let's jump into it. So number one, it's millet. Millet almost reminds you of a rice. A lot of cultures, especially like Indian cultures, grew millet and probably one of the biggest producers of millet to this day. Millet is gluten-free. It is high of antioxidants, full of magnesium. It helps with controlling diabetes and also inflammation. Millet can be ate as, for instance, like a rice dish, an oatmeal dish, a grits dish. A lot of people cook this in several different ways. So I like it because it's versatile. Another good thing about millet is people don't know about millet. When we're buying flours or sugars or grains, uh, you don't see this on your Walmart shelf. A lot of times people buy them from feed stores or from online sources. Millet is something we even plant if we're planting for dove fields or if we're planting for a quick grow to hold, uh, to hold the ground from erosion. Millet can grow but also be consumed. It's very, very good to have as a shelf stable commodity or grain. Make sure you're looking into millet. You tend to can pick it up a lot cheaper than some of the other grains. It's very good for you. Next would be one that we have seen kind of um, get popular lately. It's quinoa. Quinoa is one of those grains that uh, tend to be probably a little bit more pricier than most of the other grains. However, it is packed full of nutrients. Quinoa, again, if you're working out, you know exactly what this is, but it helps with stamina. It helps with strength. It's one of the highest sources of potassium of all whole grains. It contains all essential amino acids, which makes it a full protein, which is excellent, especially if you're trying to get a protein intake off your grains. If you don't have a big meat source or have a, a form of a, a strong protein, such as a vegetable like a chickpea or something like that, quinoa would be great. This is something that we tend to add to our oatmeals. We enjoy quinoa. You can make it just like the millet. You can actually cook it down and eat it like a rice. A lot of, pe a lot of times people may like to mix it with rices or wild rices, but quinoa is something good to have. Now this will be a little bit more expensive than some of the other grains, especially if you're buying them, but buy them in bulk. Don't buy them in the little containers at uh, Walmart or your grocer because you will pay more for it because it almost tends to be a superfood. So check with trying to buy it from a co-op like a feed store or buying it strictly online taking the middleman out and having a great source of quinoa buy it in bulk try to buy as much as you can again a great part of a diet that could help you build protein amino acid complex and very good all-around grain third would be kamut or kamut uh, i call it kamut because we're in south mississippi 
but uh, it's pronounced, I think, kamut. This is an ancient grain from Egypt. I think about it in biblical times, especially in some of those areas where this may have been one of the strongest grown grains in that area in the Middle East for a long time because it has a major source of fiber. It is the strongest source of proteins of just about any other grain. Again, just like millet, it tends to be something that you don't hear a lot about, especially in America. So if you can purchase kamut and millet, if you can purchase those kind of grains sometimes when everybody else is not purchasing, it will allow you to stockpile some of these things for a pretty good price. Now they're not gonna be cheap like you're going to buy a pack of flour at Walmart, we understand that. But this allows you to have a whole grain put up again just like the rest of them that most people are not stockpiling. It's a very good source of vitamin E, potassium, and manganese. It is excellent for your health. I think grains get a bad name because you hear all this gluten intolerant things, all those conversations. Now, some of these are gluten-free, some of these are not. But a lot of times when we talk about whole grains or ancient grains, and especially an organic or a non-GMO version of that, I honestly believe they are high quality and very good for us. I think it's like milk. I think it's like lard. I think it's like butter. I think because our industries have destroyed the natural source of a lot of these things, we tend to give it a bad name. Grains are not a bad name. It actually, again, is a, it's something that's been around for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years, and civilizations have rose and fall on grain and the fight over grain. So we know it's precious to our society. But I think that we make it bad because we GMO this thing or we try to modify it to mass produce it and then that's what we call the issues with gluten or that's when we cause the issues with you know lactose milk or that's when we call the issues of not thinking these are good foods for us it's because we've put our human ambitions into ancient grains or in, into a food source that just needs to be natural enjoy it in its natural source take this utilize it as a rice or a you know like a oatmeal or grits dish or you can grind this down and use it as a powder form all these grains can be used the exact same way. All we're trying to do is get past the narrative of just saying, I've got to have corn, I've got to have oatmeal, I've got to have rice, I've got to have wheat berries. All those are great. We stockpile those. We've made videos on those four grains too. But let's look beyond that and say, okay, what are some other options that we can substitute rice? We can substitute oatmeal. We can substitute flour. We can substitute corn. All these things become substitutes because when everybody else is buying the things that everybody knows about, wheat berries, corn, you know, flour sources, rice, you can then come back and buy some of these other things that people don't know. These ancient grains could be lifesavers for us. Number four is amaranth. This is something that grows wild. We forage in our area, and that's a smaller version of it, but you can grow amaranth in a lot of different areas. Not only is it good to grow, it is a flour source that we can make powder out of and use just like any other grain or flour based product. A lot of nutrients such as calcium, phosphorus, magnesium is one of the only grains that is documented to have a high concentrate of vitamin C. So now we're trying to take our grains and build a whole diet filler of some of the things that we may be missing. If we talk about today, if all of a sudden the big balloon popped or you know had an ENP hit our area or you had a major storm come through or the digitized currency started coming in, what would you do at this point in time if you didn't have a lot of food stored up? You would have to fight or go to the grocery and try to fight people to go get all this food. Well, if you stockpot a lot of these things, you wouldn't have to deal with that. And with grains, you have something that lasts a long time. So say you buy all these grains, say you buy one pound, two pound, five pound, 10 pound, 50 pound sacks of these grains and you start putting this up. Well, it's not gonna go bad. It's just like any other dried rice or bean. It allows you to know you have it. Hopefully you'll never use it. I say this all the time. When we talk about food prepping and putting up food and building a prepared uh, a preparedness with our food, all these foods, we hope we don't have to use in any bad situation. We want them as an insurance, just like we have health insurance. We don't wanna actually use those things. I don't want my wife having to use her life insurance for me. But it's one of those things that if we have it, we know it's there, it's there to be used, and it's something that will never go bad. If it starts getting 20 years into it and we hadn't used them, and people say, oh, you were wrong, all we gotta do is just start eating the food. It makes it very easy. Or 
grow the grain for other animals. Number five would be rye. Now rye in our area is very, very important. We use it as a cool crop grow. We use it for growing in our deer fields, but also our cattle fields. Not only can you utilize to ferment and, and make alcohols with it, which again, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day, not to drink, but to use in medicinal benefits. Rye is high in protein. We love growing rye in the winter. Now we can eat rye. You can eat it just like you would any other grain. You can powder it. Uh, people make rye bread all the time. But the thing that benefits the most about this grain is the animals. If you own animals, you know how important ryegrass is, especially if you live in areas that have cool weather. You can grow this and it's a high protein source for them when all else fails and when there is no grass. For instance, right now, these guys are eating hay right there. That hay is a Bahia hay. It doesn't have a lot of protein. It is a filler for the winter. So I'm hoping that we start having some warmer climates and start growing our beautiful fields back. But until we do, we have to let them supplement their hay. Now, what is good for an animal, especially like a ruminant animal, and something that's gonna put some pounds on them to go through the winter, is a high protein grass. And rye grass is one of those things. So having rye seed is important to me, especially as we grow for animals. If you have chickens, if you have pigs, if you have any kind of livestock, even down to rabbits, having rye seed is important, not only for us for consumption, just like all the other grains we've talked about, it tends to be something that we can utilize in our fields. If we're using them for hunting, there's a lot of animals that graze over rye grass, such as our deer and our turkey. But not only that, it's really for our livestock animals to make sure that they can take, they can be taken care of when it becomes a bad situation. We don't tend to put a lot of emphasis on the other things. The outside the box, we think about ourselves and feeding ourselves and watering ourselves, and that's important. But we have to have food sources that go past a month, two months, or three months. Having grains, and not only having grains to grow for us and to eat and consumption, it's for the cows that we're growing also. It's for the livestock that we're growing. It allows them to have life, to make a sustainable agriculture that will last, hopefully, for a long, long time. We thank you so much for watching this video. We hope this is helpful to you. Our goal is never to tell you to just buy, 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 or to stock up, stock up, stock up. The world is ending. I'm just telling you to look around you and see the news, see the craziness in our world, and to know that you've got a safekeeping of grains, foods, commodities, precious metals, cash, whatever it may be, spreading yourself out to take care of yourself in any situation is a good thing. And I think by having these five grains, maybe adding them to oats and wheat berries and salts and all those things that we've talked about before is good. Bartering, eating, and growing for agriculture. It's very, very key. And it's gonna give you a full complex of nutrients and vitamins, especially when we can't go buy just what we want. It's very good to have. Guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.